Shakespeare uses, uh, I think it's been calculated, about 20,000 words in his plays. Most of us adults who are sort of relatively well-read know, but know in total between 20,000 and 35,000 words in total. Um, and, and Shakespeare invented roughly 1,700 words, uh, many of them still in use today. And one of the most famous ones, this is kind of funny, in, bubbles is a word, for example, that we don't really have good examples of before Shakespeare. We have one instance in 1350, this woman Mary Maud uh, uses uh, the word burbles. In Macbeth, the play that we're, we're talking today, we have this line, the earth hath bubbles as the water has. And again, I, you know, it's possible that this word or something like it was floating around, but Shakespeare kind of places it in this way that we know exactly what he's talking about, right? The earth has these things that, that spring up just like the water has these things that sort of spring up from these strange depths. Um, and of course, that's central, the central idea to Macbeth. And this is a crucial moment for English, you know? I mean, we've talked about the difference between Anglo-Saxon, Old English, and then the kind of layering on of, of Norman French after 1066 in Middle English. And now then we have this long development, which is happening right around the time, which is happening sort of during Shakespeare's day and, and slightly before it, of transforming into modern English, the shaping of vowels, vowel pronunciation changes. Um, and and Shakespeare kind of has this key influence on the, on the way that that language would become codified because, of course, eventually you get things locked in and we have better and better dictionaries and all this stuff. And so this is a, you know, a transformational moment for our way of using language and our way of looking at the world. And those two things are two sides of the same coin. They're interrelated and not disconnected. <laughs>